Good to see everybody. And uh, so today, I'm kind of give a, going to give a context for what helped uh, the adoption, I believe, and, and you know what have been our sort of guide rails as a project, our sort of mission statement, so to say. And then I'll relatively fastly move on to the adoption that we've seen within SIGSTORE around the community, contributions, people that are starting to adopt the project. So um, I guess a few folks know me. I'm Luke. I work at Red Hat in the office of the CTO and I have a few other gigs as well. I'm on the Kubernetes security response team. So we triage the vulnerabilities as they come in, manage the bug bounty program, uh, the OpenSSF TAC. And I'm involved in SIGSTOR as well, so I help maintain some of the projects. I've been working on the Rust project quite a bit recently. Okay, so a quote that really holds true to tech. Okay, a lot of the time tech is a reinvention of, of a previous uh, sizable impact that another technology has had, or an idea essentially. And with SIGSTOR, it's pretty much a continuation of that. And I mean, we see this all the time. We're at KubeCon, and Kubernetes was obviously built around container orchestration, and then containers were built around namespaces. So there's somebody originally, Avi, that wrote this concept of namespaces, developed it into the, into the kernel. So you can see we often re-spin and reuse ideas that already exist. In and we did a degree of that with SIGSTOR, not only technologically, not only for the technology, but for the for the, the, um, the adoption, okay, looking at other communities that have got good adoption, okay. So one example is HTTP, okay. So HTTP is arguably the most, I might not be right here, but it's one of the most popular, popular protocols, widely leveraged protocols on the internet. And the HTTP world required to make a shift to a more secure form of the protocol, HTTPS. So the S denotes secure. I'm imagining a lot of security folks here, you already know that, but just so we can get everybody on the same playing field. And so they were tasked with achieving this. Everybody was essentially, everybody that's involved in, in writing applications and infrastructure for the internet. Now this was incredibly painful incredibly painful, perhaps that's too harsh, but it was a painful process, okay? Because habits have become very ingrained. When something works, generally people don't want to disrupt that, they don't want to change systems because there might be possible ramifications that you've not speculated might happen, certain edge cases that might play out. And so you also have that apathy of it works, which we get a lot within IT. If, if something's kind of acceptable, it might not be perfect, but it works and everybody's using it. And the painful elements, if we look at it, it was really those, you know, this was a, an area that was prime for disruption. The UX was painful and quite often it was dangerous. So this was a thing just a few years ago. Okay, I'll let you kind of look at that and draw your own conclusions. You can see obviously it's a web UI, you can generate your private key there, copy and paste it, stick it wherever, a Word document, Google Doc, I don't know, okay? And uh, so the UX was, like I say, not desirable, okay, could have been improved. And then there was also a element of it cost money, okay, so I was quite surprised at this, really. Do you see what I mean? For receiving some bits in a document, you know, some bits and, and a certificate and so forth, you can see it's a sizable financial outlay that needed to be made, okay. Now, this all changed around 2016, so several things happened in Union, which allowed us to make that shift from an insecure protocol implementation to something more secure. Okay, and a lot of this was driven by, not solely, but it was driven by a group called the ISRG, the Internet Security Research Group, and they came up with this idea of a project, Let's Encrypt. Okay, and Let's Encrypt essentially would provide tools to automate and ease the procurement of SSL or TLS certificates, okay? So you could use them to protect your, your endpoints, your network endpoints. Uh, others also helped this, it was Cloudflare, multiple sort of cloud providers started to provide free certificates for users as well, okay? And then you can see we've, um, 
we, we have this nice growth chart since 2016. And then in parallel to that, these are some measurements that I gathered from Chrome. You can see certain operating systems have actually hit 100% around the propagation and the, and the, uh, the, the leveraging of HTTPS as a, as a protection system. I found quite interesting here is the green line, okay, and that's actually Linux. And I would have thought Linux users would be up higher. My own idea, and somebody can pull me up about this if you think I'm wrong, I reckon it's developers hitting localhost and HTTP 127.0.0.1. Perhaps that's an explanation, I'm not sure. But as you can see, we've had that lovely upward trajectory to signify adoption. Okay. Then at the same time, what happened was the browsers started to corner HTTP. Okay, so they moved around. They smelt, they smelt the blood in the air. Okay. Started to uh, come up with these messages to convey this is not somewhere you want to go. Okay, essentially, you know, it became like, nowadays, if you go onto a HTTP site, it kind of feels like you don't really want to put your personal details in. Do you see what I mean? It just, it feels unsafe. And the success of that was largely due to several things, essentially. So it was ease of use. So we had CertBot, the tooling to provide um, uh, an easy, simple UX for the user, and then it was free, so there's no charge at all, no financial impact. As we've seen previously, there was that sort of $99 to procure a certificate, okay? And then, the, the, you know, us early folks that are working on Sigstore, the idea that we had was, what if we could replicate this scenario, this success that happened around HTTPS for the software supply chain? So just as you now have the experience where uh, HTTP, the, the older insecure implementation of the protocol feels dangerous, okay, socially unacceptable. It would, the, the, the same idiom would apply when you consume an artifact that's, that's unsigned and has no provenance. Uh, Dan Lawrence has a great example of a USB key on the floor, picking it up and just sticking it in your, your USB port and um, and then hoping for the best, essentially, and, and the, the parallels are the same. So what we seek to do over time, this wasn't something that happened you know, in a single moment, but it became logical, is that we need to, to provide a simple UX for the user, so abstract away all of the, the security complexities, okay? and then have the infrastructure handle that complexity. And then at the same time, make it free. Okay, so you might have a developer, a 12-year-old in Bangalore that needs to sign their container. But at the same time, you might have a huge corp in San Francisco. They should get the same level of access. You know, there should be no special tiers for payment and so forth. And the other thing was that this would be a, a public good service. We saw that as key to the adoption. Okay, so it would be a, a vendor neutral for the good of all public service, okay? And then last of all, we would reach that sort of golden state of it, it becomes socially unacceptable to consume or ingest whatever it is from the software supply chain without some level of cryptographic provenance. So let's see how did we get on, okay? So I've drawn together a quick timeline of adoption, which I'll skip through because I see Time is coming up, so um, in, I can't see the dates from here. So more or less around summer of 20, the recall project was started. Uh, shortly after that, we got a, a live instance of recall running for people to use, okay? It was, it's still an experimental at this stage. Then came along our first client implementation, Cosign, okay, so a project that Dan Lawrence had worked on. Uh, we then had um, Falsio, so the idea of keyless came up. Okay, this wonderful idea of, of uh, no longer having to manage the private key. So we started to build out Falsio from there. Um, shortly after that, the project was donated to the Linux Foundation. Okay, and um, we then, after that, a certain amount of period after that, we went into the OpenSSF, that became our new home. 
I'm hacking through this quickly because the time's coming up. And another good milestone was K8, standardized on Sigstore. So it's the star gazer release. So I've just been shown a stop sign. Other communities came on, and then we, of course, have GA, which Santiago just announced. Okay, And um, from there, we then move into the future, where we have NPM looking as very promising that they're going to come on board. There's work to uh, bring on other communities as well. And we, uh, of course, you can see our contributor growth is fantastic. We're much, uh, we're, really, we're really sort of in increasing our contributors as, a f as opposed to sort of losing them. Uh, commit rates, of course, all of these metrics are going in the direction that we'd expect them to. And last of all, we're coming up for 6 million entries on Recon. You can see that lovely spike towards the end. So, so the momentum is continuing. You know, we're continuing to get that momentum. And I believe we're only just getting started, and I've just got to stop because I've just uh, <laughs> reached the end already. So. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the conference, and great to see you all.